This is part 13 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss moving the logic to show and hide validation messages from the view template into the component class. In our previous video, we discussed moving validation messages. So this is continuation to part 12. So please watch part 12 before proceeding. At the moment, we are looking at full name form control. Notice for this form control, we still have the validation messages in the view template right here. And the logic to show and hide these validation messages is also in the view template at the moment. So these Boolean expressions right here are going to decide whether this has error class should be added or not. And again, these conditions right here is going to show or hide the validation messages. So by the end of this video, we want to be able to move all of this into a component class. At the moment, we are calling this log validation errors method within this on load data click event handler. We don't want to do that anymore. So let's comment these two lines of code. Now, when any of these form controls value is changed, we want this log validation errors method to be automatically called. And we know what this method is doing. It loops over all the form controls. And if it detects any of the form control has failed validation, it's going to store the respective validation message in this form errors object using that form control name as the key. And then the UI is going to bind to this form errors object to display the corresponding validation error message. But the question that we should be asking ourselves at this point is, how can we make sure this log validation errors method is called every time when any of these form control value is changed? Well, if you remember, in part 10 of this video series, we discussed value changes observable. This observable emits an item every time a form control value changes. This observable is also available at a form group level. So if we subscribe to the value changes observable of our employee form form group, then we are going to be notified when any of the form controls within this employee form form group changes. So this dot employee form dot value changes. This is an observable. So let's subscribe. When any of the form controls in the employee form form group changes, we will be notified and the changed data will be passed as a parameter. We're not going to do anything with this data. Let's simply pass it to the function here. Inside this function, we're going to call our log validation errors method. And this method expects a form group to be passed. We want to pass our employee form form group. Now in the view template, we can remove these validation messages and the logic to show and hide them. Instead of all these Boolean expressions here, we can simply bind to full name property on the form errors object. That's because when any of these form controls in employee form changes, log validation errors method is automatically called. And this method checks if that form control has failed validation. If that's the case, it's going to store the validation message in the form errors object using that form control name as the key. And then the UI is binding to that same key. So in this case, if full name property within the form errors object is true the meaning it's not null or an empty string, then add this has error class. Otherwise, remove it. We can do the same thing right here as well. And we don't need to have these two span elements. Instead, we will simply bind to the full name property on form errors object. Let's save all these changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now when the full name form control receives focus and if we leave the element without typing anything, we don't get the required error. But then if I type a character, we get the min length error. And when I delete that character, we get the required error. But on the initial page load, when the form control receives focus and when the focus is lost, we don't see that required error. So let's understand why is this happening. As the name implies, this value changes observable emits an event only when a form control value in this employee form changes. Now, when a control receives focus and loses focus, its value is not changed. And hence, this value changes observable does not emit an event. That means this log validation errors method is not called. And that's the reason we don't see a validation error when the control receives and loses focus. There are several ways to fix this. One of the easiest ways is by binding to the blur event and calling log validation errors method manually. 
this blur event is raised when a form control loses focus. So let's bind to the blur event of our full name input element. It's event binding, so we use pair of parentheses. The name of the event is blur. When this event is raised, we want to call our log validation errors method. And to this method, we want to pass our form group. Our form group is employee form. So let's specify our employee form as the default value. When we do this, we don't have to specify a value for this parameter when we call it from the template. Notice now, when our full name form control receives focus and loses focus, we see the required error as expected. If I type a single character, we see the min length. And if I type more than 10 characters, we see the max length error. If I delete everything, we see the required error. On the email form control, we don't see any validation errors. But if we take a look at our email form control, it has got required validation function. So let's do similar changes on our email form control as well. First, let's include this class binding. And instead of binding to full name property on the form errors object, we want to bind to email property. Next, let's include this pan element to display the validation error. Instead of binding to full name, we bind to email. Finally, bind to the blur event of the input element. Notice now, when I touch the email form control and leave it, in addition to the required error on email form control, we also see the full name required error. We have not touched the full name and left it, but why are we seeing this error? That's because if you look at the implementation of our log validation errors method, we are only checking if the control is valid or not. If it's not valid, that control validation message is included. When the validation message is present, the UI is just going to display it. So to fix this, in addition to checking if the control is not valid, let's also check if it is touched or dirty. So if the control is not valid and if it is touched or dirty, then go ahead and include the validation error message. Notice now the required validation for full name and email works as expected. Now, if we take a look at skill-related form controls, that is skill name, experience in years, and proficiency, notice on each of these form controls, we have required validation function. Now, let's make similar changes to these three input elements so we can see their required validation errors as well. The changes are going to be very similar to full name and email form controls. So in the interest of time, I'm going to do those changes offline. My changes are here. One important thing to keep in mind is I have changed the layout of the fields slightly to properly display the validation errors. In case if you need this HTML, I'll have it available on my blog and include the link to it in the description of this video. With the changes I made, this is how our create employee form looks now. Notice all the skill related fields are in a bootstrap well. When the form controls loses focus, we see the required errors as expected. At the moment, the focus is in experience text box and I'm using tab to cycle through these form controls. When the experience text box loses focus, we see its required error and at the moment the focus is on these proficiency radio buttons. When I press tab again, we see the required error of the radio buttons. Here is our full name input element HTML. As you can see, it's much simpler now. All the validation attributes, validation error messages, and the logic to show and hide them are in the component class right now. As a result of moving all these into the component class, our code is much easier to unit test now. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.